Hey everyone, my name is Carlos Eni, also known as Insane in the Rain Music here on YouTube, and I'm here today to review the new Iwi solo. I'm a tenor saxophonist primarily, and I discovered the Iwi in 2018, and since then it's become a mainstay for me. Also, I'm the guy who is silly enough to make the Iwi dictionary definition shirt. Um, if you want one of these, there's a link in the description. If you're just discovering me or just discovering the iwi, I'd recommend you watch my first iwi video. It goes over the history of the instrument and the fundamentals of playing it. The main thing I love about the iwi is being able to translate my saxophone skills onto a completely new instrument with a completely different sound and lots of interesting tones. I primarily play on this iwi 4000S, which I love, um, but I've also tried the iwi USB and iwi 5000, but ended up sticking uh, with this baby for the long term. When I heard that the Iwi Solo was coming out, uh, I got ridiculously excited and ordered one from Patron Music the day I heard it come out. At first glance, this looks like Akai's answer to the Roland Aerophone, um, judging by the fact that this is the first Iwi to ever have a built-in speaker, which is a big deal. I haven't played the Aerophone myself, so I can't directly speak to how these compare. So before I go over the details, I thought I'd just give you my bottom line up front. Um, the Iwi Solo is what I would call a student model Iwi, or maybe an intermediate wind controller. The Solo, in my opinion, is actually superior to the 4000S in pretty much every way, except for one really crucial area, the sounds. <laughs> if you've never played an Iwi before and are just wanting to get into one, the Iwi Solo is definitely your best bet, beating out all the other Iwis in terms of price and convenience. I could see this being very useful for anyone looking to try a wind instrument for the first time, just like the other Iwi models, this is a great practice tool, and the built-in speaker down here and the built-in sound library make it even more convenient than the Iwi USB and some other previous models. However, if you want to use the Iwi in any sort of professional recording capacity, um, I think you're better off sticking to the 4000, just because even though it is a little less convenient to use, the sounds on this thing provided by Pat from Music are just unmatched and are so great. So let's talk about the sounds. With any musical instrument, the sound quality is bar none the most important part for me. If someone's listening to your EV performance on like a phone speaker or on some bad headphones as they're walking down the, the street, right? They don't really care how convenient it is for you to play the thing. They don't care about the rechargeable battery. They just care, does it sound good or not? So the Solo has an onboard sound system pretty similar to that of the 5000. Akai advertises 200 onboard premium acoustic and synth sounds. So let's just see how premium some of these are. The first 100 sounds in the program list are dedicated to emulations of real instruments, and the second 100 are dedicated to synth tones. If you've watched my first Iwi video, you'll know that my philosophy on Iwi tones is that the Iwi sounds best when it's not trying to imitate an acoustic instrument that already exists. For example, if you wanted to get a good nylon guitar sound, I think you'd be so much better off learning to play the actual thing, rather than try and get a knockoff sound on a completely different type of instrument like the Iwi. Because of this, I honestly would rarely ever use any of the first hundred sounds in the program list. There's a couple you can get away with, like the harmonica, 
the pan pipes and the muted trumpet sound, but only because those specific ones sound cheesy enough to not sound like legitimate attempts at replicating the original sounds in full quality. Besides these few, I rarely use any of the others, and really question why some of these were even included in the sound bank, other than to just bolster the number of sounds on the on the solo. I think that the number of sounds the sound bank has in it has almost no bearing on how good they are. The second set of hundred, though, the synth sounds, are a bit of a different story, and to me, this is where the EB solo starts to shine a bit more. To me, these are automatically better since they're not trying to imitate real instruments. Um, and I honestly actually quite like some of these. The last five in particular sound pretty good. And they're also named after Studio Ghibli movies, <laughs> which is kind of weird to me since I'm a big Ghibli fan. And I wouldn't imagine those two worlds really intersecting, but I'll take it. Personally, my favorite sound on the solo is number 200, which is uh, labeled as T Island. I can only assume that's a callback to a song featuring the Iwi by the band T Square called Takarajima, which translates to Treasure Island in English. In my opinion, these tones are pretty good, but are not quite at the same level as the tones that Matt Trom has designed for the Patchman Music sound bank for the EB4000S. I'm not a huge like synth sound designer myself, um, so I can't speak specifically as to why the tones on the 4000S sound so much better, but there's just a certain wow factor I get with so many of them, and how they feel on the 4000S, that I just don't get with the EW solo or the 5000 at all. Because of the way that the synthesis is handled on the solo, it's unfortunately incompatible with the Patchman sound bank that was designed for the 4000S. This is also true of the 5000. You do get access to onboard reverb, delay, and chorus controls, but those don't, don't really change the fundamental characteristic of the sound. You can edit the tones a little bit more by using Akai's advanced edit mode, um, which involves connecting your solo to the computer via USB, but you don't get access to the synth parameters in the same granular way that you can on something like the 4000S. Because I value sound quality so much, um, it's for this reason that I'm gonna be sticking to 
my 4000S as my primary UI and keeping the solo as a backup instrument. However, on the subject of advanced edit mode, um, there's one setting that I'd recommend changing immediately to get a better sound on all the sounds that the UI solo has. I'd recommend going in and enabling legato mode. By default, the transitions between notes on the solo just like make me mad <laughs> because they don't sound like how a normal wind instrument would progress between tones. Um, but by changing this setting, it makes everything a lot smoother and sounds a lot better to me. Now, what about the other part of my bottom line thesis where I said the solo is superior to the 4000S in pretty much other field? I've been bashing the solo admittedly in the sound department quite a bit here um, because the sounds are so important to me, but it does deserve some praise for the other features. So let's go over what's the same and what's different about the EB solo compared to everything else. The unit comes in this black color, which is I guess pretty nice. The keywork on the front is largely the same compared to the 4000S and 5000 with one very, very welcomed addition. This little key right here is known as K10 in the EWI key naming system. Um, but if you're a saxophonist like me, you'll recognize this as the alternate F sharp key, which is a big deal because it eliminates a lot of the finger flopping um, that would that you'd have to do before on the EWI to get um, to go between the specific range of pitches. I'm still getting a little used to it, but it's super convenient and it doesn't interfere with the hold and octave buttons, which are still in the same place they were before. Flipping to the back side of the instrument, uh, let's just go from the top to the bottom. Immediately, you'll notice that the EWI has the EWI solo has a bit of a bent neck compared to the EWI 4000. Here you can see both of them um, like this. I honestly don't notice much difference between going back and forth between this curved neck and the 4000's uh, straight neck, but I assume it was mostly done to accommodate the longer body size of the instrument um, because the EW solo is just a little bit longer than uh, than the 4000 here with the, with the speaker at the end. One of my favorite features of the solo is this display right here. Um, this lets you access the menu system on the solo, which is so well done and so useful. The various buttons here below the display let you access different menus to change different parameters. And this dial knob right here lets you navigate between the different options on these menus. Um, when you're not in a menu, the dial knob is also just the universal volume control on the instrument, which is super well designed. Major props to Akai for including this, and I hope to see this on every subsequent EWI model. The solo also introduced the option to save favorite patches, which is fantastic. Um, the 4000S had something like this, but with the way to the way to save and recall the patches was really confusing. Um, but this is super easy, just these four buttons right here. The solo has the exact same seven position octave roller mechanism, which you would use with your uh, uh, your left thumb when you're playing. This is definitely a bit of a point of contention among a lot of wind controller players, but personally, I think it's the best method for navigating the range quickly. It does require some practice in adjusting your key delay settings to get used to, but I think it's the best system out there. An interesting change was made to the right thumb area of the solo as well. On the 4000S, there are these uh, these two pitch bend plates right here. On the solo, the top pitch bend plate has been removed, and instead we just have this nice big thumb rest. It's nice because this allows you to play the solo without using a neck strap if you'd like. Probably gonna be using the bottom pitch bend plate more um, than the top one anyway. When I was part of a beginner EWI class at Berkeley, um, a lot of the other students in the class had some issues with like letting their, have, being so used to having their thumb rest right here and having the, like accidentally triggering the pitch bend plate. So um, this is a great solution to that problem that makes it better overall. I like this quite a bit. Beneath the pitch bend plate is the power button, which lets you turn on the instrument. Um, the EWI Solo is powered by a lithium ion rechargeable battery that Akai claims can last for over 12 hours. I haven't tested that myself, but <laughs> I don't think you're gonna have a 12 hour gig anytime soon. The Solo can recharge via USB by plugging into this slot down here. And it's super convenient, especially compared to the 4000S, which just uses four AA batteries and also gives you no indication of when it's about to die. <laughs> Speaking of which, mine is actually dead right now because I forgot to move the switch. Uh oh, <laughs> what, what amazing timing. My 4000S is actually in the on position, but it's dead because I left the switch in the on position. Um, and that problem has been fixed in the in the the solo because this has an auto power off feature, which somehow this thing doesn't, unless you call running out of juice in the battery an auto power off feature. The solo has a headphone out and line out jack, which are common on all the EV models with uh, built-in sound systems, um, but also has an aux in jack. So if you want to listen to music while you're playing, you can just plug in there and it'll actually output out of the speaker down here, which I thought was pretty interesting. Let's talk about the built-in speaker at the bottom, which is one of the biggest changes. Um, obviously with a speaker of just 
like this size, like this compared to like the palm of my hand, it's not very big. It is mainly intended for practicing purposes and just to like hear yourself acoustically. Um, it is not very loud. I would say it's no louder than um, any sort of conversation that would normally happen in a room. So don't expect to ever use this in a performance setting. You're much better off um, plugging into an amp or something like that. It's quiet enough that even if you have it on full blast, you probably won't disturb any neighbors. One thing that is noticeably missing from the body of the Solo is any sort of five pin MIDI jack. This has been effectively replaced by the USB out down here. Um, but I know that some people really need that five pin MIDI jack. I personally don't use it in my EWI life. Um, so I don't miss it personally, but maybe somebody else does. So those are all the features of the EWI Solo. Um, lastly, let's talk about the price. So the EWI Solo is the second cheapest EWI available at 500 US dollars, more expensive than the EWI USB, which retails for about 300. However, the EWI Solo is the cheapest EWI that has all the features that I'd consider essential for an EWI, including the full uh, seven octave range and the onboard sound system. Um, the 5000 goes for about 800, but honestly, compared to the Solo, it really doesn't add that much. Um, the only thing I guess it would add is the wireless connectivity, which not you, you don't really need that. You can just plug a cable and just run it. As far as I know, Akai isn't making the 4000Ss anymore, which is a shame because they sound the best to me. And they are the ones that I recommended in my previous EV video. Um, so the only way to get one is by shopping on the used market. I've seen some of these go for pretty cheap, like 450 bucks, but normally you're thinking like the 700 to thousand dollar range on sites like eBay and Reverb. So here is my absolute final verdict. If you're interested in getting an EWI for the first time, go with the EWI Solo. It has all the features you'd need to effectively learn to play the instrument. But if you want the best possible sound quality out of the EWI and you want to be like a, like a professional recording artist in the EWI, um, I would recommend going for the 4000S. Um, it is inconvenient to shop for on used markets, yeah, and it's a little inconvenient to get the patchman sounds in, but it is so worth it with the tone quality you get from it. Now, just a hypothetical, let's say someone from Akai is watching this, and I had my chance to pitch um, what I think the best EV would be that would combine features from all the different EWEs into like the ultimate machine. Um, maybe the, the EW 6000 or whatever Akai decides to make in the future. So here's what I think would be the best. Um, start with the EW Solo as the basis. I think that this thing has so many great quality of life features, probably most notably like um, this display is great. Uh, the new, the new F sharp key and the speaker are probably my favorite things on this thing, but swap out the sound module inside this thing for something similar to the 4000. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same, though if we were able to load the patchman sounds onto this new EW6000, I guess I'll call it that for now, that would be fantastic. Um, at least something that gives us more access to the, to like more fine controls in the synth itself. Um, again, I'm not like a synthesist primarily or anything, but more control gives us better sounds. I would personally be fine without any of the sounds that tried to emulate real instruments because I don't use those anyway. I just play the real thing. I'd even be happy if there were just 10 sounds available on the UI, but they were all extremely good and extremely fine tunable like they are on the 4000. So combine the quality of life features of the Solo with the sound of the 4000 and also the wireless connectivity of the 5000. And I think that would be the perfect, we would have achieved peak EWI with that. With features like that, I would be happy for sure. Um, but more importantly, I think it would allow more saxophonists or other woodwind players to add the EWI to their repertoire as a serious extension to their sound. I think the thing that's lacking the most in the new EWI models is just the sounds. I mean, there's a reason why all the professional EWI players I know of, like Bob Mincer, Seamus Blake, Chad Lefkowitz Brown, Zach Zinger, um, Sarpai of Sharp Eye Music, I can't, I can't pronounce his last name, um, they all use the 4000S with the patchman sounds. Um, I would love to see an influx of professional EV players if they had the right equipment. And all the ingredients are there. They just need to be put into the same soup which could be the EWI 6000S or the EWI Soup, <laughs> the Super EWI, <laughs> I don't know. I would 100% buy one of those. Um, one other small change that I think could be interesting would be allowing the user to control the size of this air escape hole on the bottom. I've played around with a Silphio before, which is another wind controller type instrument. Um, and it's not really an official feature, but you can use like tape and cut and it's got a pretty big air escape hole and you can cover up part of that escape hole with a piece of tape and it changes how resistant the instrument feels, sort of like changing your reed strength on a saxophone. And I think having that level of control would be really interesting on the EWI, especially for people who like to feel more resistance 
um, not just have the instrument respond less with the breath control sensor, but also change how the instrument fundamentally feels. I think that would be super cool. So that's all I've got to say about the solo for now. Um, if you want to pick one up, you can support the channel by using the Amazon affiliate links in the video description. And uh, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I uh, look forward to catching you in another video.